Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Once again, I want to say a big thank you to Pastor, the entire church, for this opportunity to share with the people of the Most High. We thank God for the brand new day that the Lord has brought us in. We thank God for this month uh, that is a month of fasting, a month of praying. I want to please let you know that your waiting upon God can never be in vain. He, he will mightily, mightily bless you. Let's just join our hands together this morning and lift up our hands to the Most High to bless His holy name. Every time I see another breaking of the day, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every time I see another breaking of the day, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just lift up your voice wherever you are and thank the Lord this morning for waking you up into the land of the living. Thank the Lord for his goodness. Thank the Lord for his faithfulness. Thank the Lord for his mercies. Thank the Lord that you are alive today. There are thousands of people that their lives have been lost even during this pandemic. But God in his infinite wisdom and mercy has kept us. The Bible says it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. The Bible says his mercies, they are new every morning. This is the morning of God's mercy. The Bible says we may be endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I want you to know this is your morning of joy. Lift up your voice. Adore the King of glory. We worship you. We adore you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We hallow your name. We reverence you. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we worship Father, we turn we thank you for this three days conference. Thank you because we know the glory of the latter house will always surpass the former. Daddy, on this third and last day, we ask, O oh God, that the heavens will open mightily over your people in the name of Jesus. You will open their books of destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. That which you have destined concerning them, you will bring it to pass. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. We are going to be reading from the book of Revelations chapter 5. Revelations chapter 5. We are going to be reading from verse 1. We take a few verses and then we go on into some other parts of the Bible uh, as the Lord will inspire us. Uh, the Bible tells us, when you read in the King James Version, Revelations 5 from verse 1, it says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. Verse 2, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the the seven seals thereof. Let's stop there for a moment. I'm going to be talking to somebody this morning. Weep not, you will sing a new song. I don't know who you are. It's not a preaching, it's a message. It's a declaration from the throne of grace that your day of weeping, your days of weeping, they are over. From now on, you are going to start singing a new song. The Bible says in that scripture we read, Revelations 5, that there was a book in the hand of the Most High God. 
and that the book was sealed with seven seals, and that there was nobody found who could open the book. And that was why there was weeping. John was weeping on the island of Patmos. Why? Because he saw the book. He saw the book written inside and outside, yet it was sealed, and he was weeping because nobody was found worthy to open the book. But they now consoled him in verse 5. They said, Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. I want you to know that God writes in books. And God is able to write. When you read in the book of Exodus in chapter 32, between verse 15 and verse 16, the Bible says that there were tables of stone that God wrote with his own handwriting. The Bible tells us that that table of stone was written with the handwriting of God. And in the book of Isaiah chapter 49, the Bible says in verse 16, God says, I have graven you in the hollow of my palms. He says, I have graven you in the hollow of my palms. Isaiah chapter 49, when you read in verse 16, I pray today, this morning, that God will write somebody's name in the hollow of his palm in the name of Jesus. Why did God say, I have graven thee in the palms of my hands? He was simply saying that to let you know he will never forsake you, he will never forget you, he will always remember you. And for him to always remember to do you good, he decided to write about you in the hollow of, your, of his palm. I want you to know, people of God, that everything God is going to do are already written down somewhere. Everything is going to do. Yesterday I was sharing with you from Habakkuk chapter 2. When you read in verse 2 to verse 4, he said, write the vision down. It is for an appointed time. And so when God gives you a vision of what he wants to do, he tells you to write it down. The same way God also writes down even that which he has proposed to do in the life of man. In the book of Hebrews in chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, the Bible says in verse 7, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7, he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book written of me. To do thy will, O God. Do you know who they we are talking about here? Jesus. He said, I am coming in the volume of the book. Long ahead, before Jesus was even born, so much had been written about him. How he was going to be born. When you read in Isaiah 53, the Bible even went ahead to talk about how he was going to die. He will be bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace will be upon him. By his stripes will be healed. Bible said so many things about how Jesus was going to live his life. I want you to know that every child of God, every one of us, God had written our destiny somewhere. What we are looking at this weekend by the grace of God is what God has written concerning us. What God has spoken concerning us, written somewhere. When will it be performed? When will it come to pass? How can we provoke what is written concerning each one of us to be performed? In the book of Psalms, Psalm 139, Psalm 139 from verse 14 to verse 16. The Bible says that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He said, marvelous are thy works, and my soul knoweth it right well. Verse 15, he said, my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in the secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. He said, your eyes saw my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book, in your book, all my members were written, which in continuous were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. When you see it in other Bible versions, you will have a clearer understanding of that verse 16. His Bible says in verse 16 in the New Living Translation, he said, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. I like this scripture. You remember a few days ago we were talking about Jeremiah. When you read in Jeremiah chapter 1 in verse 5, God said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you as a prophet unto the nations. 
And Jeremiah was said, I'm a little child, I cannot. And I said, when did God know Jeremiah? Before he was even conceived. And how did God know someone that was not yet conceived? Because everything that exists today at a time existed as a word. At the time existed as a word. The Bible says the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. So before you existed, you were a word. All God did to bring you into existence was to speak you forth. The moment he released that word, you were formed. So the Bible says here in verse 16, in the New Living Translation, Psalm 139 verse 16, the Bible says that all my days were written in your book. Before one day came to pass, in the New Living Translation, he said, all my days, every day of mine, every day of my life was recorded in your book. So God has a book. And he said, every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. What did God write about you? That you're going to be a doctor? What did God write about you? You are going to be the next president? What did God write about you? You are going to be the next governor? What did God write about you? You are going to be a pastor? What did God write about you? You are going to win souls? You are going to take over kingdoms? What did God write about you? And it's yet to be fulfilled. Some don't even know what God has written about them. Why? Because they are in the book in the hand of God. And there are seals upon the book. And the Bible says they wept even in that place where revelation was given to John on the island of Patmos. And why were they weeping? Because there was nobody available to break the seals and to open the book. But they encouraged John in Revelation 5, when you read in verse 5, they say, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the, 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 the root of David, had prevailed, had prevailed. To prevail means to defeat somebody else. To prevail means to win a battle. To prevail means to succeed in a context. He says, I prevail to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. I announced to somebody that when Jesus died at Calvary, it was to prevail over the enemy so that your book of destiny can be opened. So that your book that is containing your future, containing your tomorrow, that book can be opened. I pray today that your own book will be opened in the name of Jesus. I say your book will be opened. Look at the book of Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah 29, when you read in verse 11 to 14, verse 11 to 14, he said, the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. The words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. How do you read a book that is sealed? You cannot, even though you are learned, you can't read the book. The book can't start manifesting. The content can't be put to use. Why? There is a seal upon the book that must be broken. Every seal upon your book of destiny, every seal that is not aligned your book to be read. Every seal that is not aligned the content that God had put in the book concerning you, even to begin to manifest. We are asking that the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, prevails this morning, even to break that seal in the name of Jesus. I say that seal is broken. I say that seal is taken away in the name of Jesus. When you read in the book of Ecclesiastes, in chapter 3, in verse 14, the Bible says, Whatsoever the Lord doeth, abideth forever. It abideth forever. He said, Nothing can be put to it, nothing can be taken from it. He said, God doeth it that men should fear. The content of your book, written by God, it cannot be added to, it cannot be subtracted from, it must come to pass. But the issue is, are you living your life according to what God has written concerning you, or you are living? your life according to what the devil wrote because the devil also writes 
books. The Bible makes us to understand when you read in the book of Job, in Job chapter 31, Job 31 in verse 32, Job 31 verse 32, he said in the book of Job 31, he said, the stranger did not lodge in the street, but I opened my doors to the traveler. I pray in the name of Jesus that God of heaven we open the book of destiny for you in the name of Jesus. When the devil is writing, the devil writes lies. The devil writes lies. Everything written by the devil, they are lies. I pray today by the message of the living God that the truth of God will begin to manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. He will not write lies concerning you. The Lord will not allow what the devil has written. He will concerning anyone even to come to pass in the name of Jesus. I say it will not come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever you are, you open your mouth and make that declaration. Whatever the devil has written, it will not come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. It will not come to pass in the name of Jesus. Everything written by the enemy, I reject it. I refuse it. I renounce it. I declare it will not come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Only what God has written concerning me will surely come to pass. Only what God has written concerning me will surely come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Bible tells us in that Job 31, when you read in the verse 35, Job 31 in verse 35, the Bible says, All oh, that one will hear me. He said, Behold, my desire is that the Almighty will answer me, and that my adversary had written a book. Your adversary wrote a book, Ah, child of God, you can't afford to live your life based on what your adversary had written. There is a book written by the adversary. There is a book written by the enemy enemy. There's a book written by the evil one. Every book written by the adversary concerning you. We declare that book will not control your life. That book will not control your destiny. That book will not control your future. That book you will not live according to that book. In the name of Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians 13. The Bible says in verse 8. He said we can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth. We can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth. What God writes about you is the truth. What the devil writes about you are lies. What men write about you are facts. But I want you to please understand. That lies will not stand in your life. What men have written about you. Some have written you off. You were in school and they said you will never amount to anything. It may be a fact at that time that you were not excelling in your classes. But that is not the truth about you. The truth about you is what is written in a book that is sealed. He said, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to break the seven seals and to open the book. I pray today, this morning, by the mercy of the living God that your book will be opened it will no longer be sealed your book will be opened it will no longer be sealed in the name of Jesus a few days ago I was telling us in this same program that the prophecy of God is the speaking forth of the mind of God the prophecy of God is the speaking forth of the mind of God it simply means that any time prophecy is coming, God is speaking his mind. And the mind of God about you is the truth. I just told you that nothing can be done against the truth, but for the truth. It means any time somebody is trying to do something to make sure that the truth God that's written about you or the truth God has spoken about you, that that truth does not come to pass, what they will actually be doing is they will be helping the truth to be accomplished. 
You remember the story of Joseph. We have used that example these few, week, few days, this weekend. And the Bible tells us when you read in Genesis 37, how Joseph had a dream that his brothers were bound to him. And the brothers envied him. And the brothers hated him. And they plotted to kill him. Eventually they decided to sell him to slavery. But do you know, while they thought they were bringing an end to the dream God had given him. And they said, here come the dreamer. Let's see how his dream will come to pass. The Bible says that they were actually moving Joseph in the direction of fulfilling that dream. I don't know what God has written about you. Whosoever tries to walk against it will only be advancing the fulfillment, even of that dream, of that vision, of that which God has written. In the name of Jesus, if you believe it, say better. Amen. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, Almighty God. In the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, the Bible says in chapter 3, in verse 16, the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All scripture. And the Bible says it is given by the inspiration of God. I want you to please understand that every time you are reading your Bible, it is not a storybook. It's a book of prophecy. It's a book that contains things that God has written concerning the destinies of men. And I believe there is somebody hearing me. That what God has written concerning you in the book that is sealed. God will break the seals so that your eyes can open to be able to see your own inside this book that God has written concerning you. The Bible went on in that Second Timothy chapter 3. I said you should read verse 16. He went on in the very next verse. He says that the man of God may be perfect. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The reason why the content of the Bible is given by inspiration is so that you can be perfect. So that you can be thoroughly furnished. So that you can be able to do good works. Whatever you need to do to be able to good, do good works, the Lord will guide you to discover it in the name of Jesus. When you read in 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, in verse 20 and verse 21. 2 Peter chapter 1. In verse 20 and verse 21. The Bible says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture. I told you the scripture is a prophecy. He said no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Then he said, For the prophecy came, not in all time by the will of man, but only men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Only men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. People of God, that which is written in the word of God is the word of life. It's prophecy from God. It's not a storybook. And I know that every prophecy have a day for performance. We learned that yesterday. This morning by the message of God, I want you to know that you have been given a prophecy does not mean that it will immediately be performed. It only tells you that is the beginning of warfare. <laughs> that is the beginning of warfare. Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, when you read in verse 18, 1 Timothy chapter 1, when you read in verse 18, he said, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. That thou by them mightest war a good warfare. When God gives you a prophecy, it is to tell you that there will be things that will fight it. There will be things that will resist it. There will be things that will oppose it. Many times the Bible says a man's own enemy are members of his own household. Many times what will fight your prophecy are even your family members, people close to you. And they are saying, how can this one advance? Have you ever heard about PhD operation pull him down? And as much as you are trying to go high, and accomplish what God has written concerning you, your family members are saying, no, you can't leave us here. You have to stay here with us. You can't get up. Somebody told me, they call it the crab mentality, that you put 
a hundred crabs in a basket. Not one will escape. Because as one crab is trying to come out, the other crabs are pulling him back. And they say, you can't leave us here. You want to escape out of this place? We are staying here together. I don't know what your family is doing to pull you down. But as they were trying to pull Joseph down, they were advancing his dream. They were advancing the truth. They were advancing what God has said concerning him. They were advancing what God had written concerning him. I am also saying that concerning somebody. That no matter what man may do, what your family members may do, the prophecy God had given you, it will come to pass. The prophecy God had given you, it will be performed. The thing that God had written concerning you, in your book of life, in your book of destiny, the seals will be broken. That book of destiny will be opened. You will not weep anymore. You will sing a new song. You will sing a new song. I say you will sing a new song. I say you will sing a new song. As the Lord God of heaven live it, you will sing a new song in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, King of glory. In the book of Luke, in chapter 4, <laughs> Jesus was going to open his own book. And the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 4, when you read in verse 18, Jesus Let's take it from verse 17. The Bible says they delivered even to the hand of Jesus the book of Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. What was written there? The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Then in verse 19 he said. He said to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then in verse 20 he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister. And he sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasted on him. And in verse 21 he declared. And he said unto them. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Everybody had been reading that book. Everybody had been reading that particular passage. But that day, Jesus did not only read it, he announced to them the day of his performance has come. The day for the book even to begin to manifest what had been written, to begin to be performed. He said, this day it is fulfilled in your ears. Why did Jesus say that? He had broken the seals. He had opened the book. I don't know who is hearing me today. As the Lord God of heaven live it. The book of destiny written concerning you the seals are also broken in the name of Jesus the Lord is opening your book I said you are opening your book the Lamb of God the Lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to break the seven seals and to open the book thereof there are some people that broke one seal and so the book opens to one chapter of their life and because they have not broken all the seals the book of their life or their life is just reading one part of their life and they are stuck they are not making progress but as the lord god of heaven live it this morning everyone hearing me all that god has written concerning you you will fulfill in the name of jesus peradventure you missed the passage i read earlier in the book of psalm psalm 139 in verse 16, Psalm 139 verse 16, in the New Living Translation, let me repeat it, the New Living, the Bible says, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. The NIV version, the NIV version puts it in a different way. He says, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me, we are written in your book before one of them came to be. There is something written about you in the book of God. Every day of your life there is something written. There are things you have to achieve every day. You can't open one chapter of your life and you'll be stuck there. Every chapter of your life must be opened. Every page of your book must be opened. Everything God has written concerning you must be opened. And Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, has prevailed to break the seven seals. And to open the book thereof. I congratulate you today. Because you will not weep anymore. You will sing a new song. If we go back now to Revelations. That chapter 5. The Bible went on from verse 6. 
Revelation chapter 5 from verse 6 in the King James Version. He said, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood the lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book, out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders, they fell down before the lamp, having every one of them harps and golden vials, full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Verse 9. And they sang a new song. I told you you will sing a new song. They sang a new song. Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain, has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kingdom and tongue and people and nation. Let's pause for a moment at that place. The Bible says the lion of the tribe of Judah, in verse 5, has prevailed to break the seven seals and to open the book. But when the elders we are going to see who appeared, it was not a lion. It was the lamp of God. A lamp of God that was slain. A lamp of God that had shed his blood. A lamp of God that died for us. And the Bible says he appeared, having said seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. And the Bible says the eyes that went forth into all the earth, that eyes has gone around on your behalf to say wherever your destiny is, let them begin to look for you. Then he came and he took the book from the right hand of the one who sat upon the throne. And then he opened the book. And when the 20 elders, the 24 elders, when they saw him do this, they worshipped him. They said, fell down before the lamp. And they said he's the one that has the honor, that has the right to to take the book and to read it. I pray for somebody today that the death of Jesus on the cross in Calvary was so that your destiny can start. The death of Jesus on the cross in Calvary was so that what is written concerning you in the book of God can start. Before you come to the saving knowledge of Christ, Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, when you read in verse 2, he said you used to be under the curse of this world. The Bible says you used to live according to the, uh, the, to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that walketh in the children of disobedience. That was what the Bible says. You were under the control of the devil. You were under the control of the enemy. You were operating by the book that the devil had written. But one day, you came to the saving knowledge of Christ. You came to obtain mercy. You enjoyed the love of God. And from that day, the lamp went to the hand of the Most High and said, Where's the book of Pulio Motosho? Where's the book of that pastor? Where's the book of that brother? He has surrendered his life to Jesus. And they opened your book and they said, Your destiny can start. Do you know? my destiny as a pastor I never knew I could become a pastor I was so much lost on the other side of life wasting away being manipulated under the book written by the devil but the day I gave my life to Christ the book written by God was opened for me. I don't know who's hearing it this morning. As the Lord God of heaven live it, your own book too will be opened. Your own destiny too will start. There shall be a performance of that destiny. In the name of Jesus, there shall be a performance. If you go to that Revelations 5, in verse 9, verse 9, the Bible tells us, it says they sang a new song. He said, you are worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain, and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, out of every tongue, out of every people, out of every nation. Verse 10. And the Bible says, and you have made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. The Bible says you will reign on earth. God is making you kings. God is making you priests so that you can reign on earth. You will no longer be under the dominion of anyone. You will no longer be under the oppression of anyone. He wants you to reign. We can only reign based on what he has written concerning you. Do you know that Jesus was the son of the carpenter? Nobody knew him. But the day he appeared and he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. From that day, the Bible says his fame spread abroad. He began to reign. His name was all over. I don't know who is hearing me this morning. Your own fame too is spreading abroad. If you surrender your life to Jesus today, your book of destiny that is not yet opened, it will be opened. And peradventure you are already surrendered 
surrendered your life and only one seal was opened because you didn't know that you need to cry to God that every seal be opened. I said today by the mercy of God, every seal that is still covering your book will be taken away in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Revelations 5, why were there seven seals? Bible tells us in verse 10 and verse 11, he said, he has made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Verse 11. And I beheld, and I had the voice of many angels, round about the throne, and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands. Verse 12. Say with a loud voice, what is the lamb that was slain to receive number one power? Number two, riches. Number three, wisdom. Number four, strength. Number five, honor. Number six, glory. And number seven, blessing. You don't want to miss out, out of any one of these. You don't want to say you want power and you don't want riches. You don't want to say you want wisdom and you don't want strength. You don't want to say you want honor and you don't want glory. You want the seven. That is why seven seals must be broken. That is why seven things that are held the book down must be broken so that they can be opened. So that power can be available to you. Riches can be available to you. Wisdom can be available to you. Strength can be available to you. Honor can be available to you. Glory can be available to you. Blessing will be available to you. I announced to somebody this morning that the seals are broken. Your book of destiny is opened. Your life is having a new beginning. In the name of Jesus. In Isaiah 34, as I try to round this off, Isaiah 34, when you read in verse 16, Isaiah 34 verse 16, the Bible says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord. The book of the Lord, seek ye out of it. He said, and read. He said, no one of these shall fall, shall, 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 shall fail. None shall want a meet. He said, for my mouth it had commanded it, and his spirit it had gathered them. When you look at that same scripture in the New Living Translation, he said in verse 16, he said, search the book of the Lord and see what he will do. Not one of these birds or animals will be missing. None will lack a mate, for the Lord has promised this. His spirit will make it all come true. I want you to please understand. That that scripture is not just talking about animals. He said that none of them will be missing. He said none of them will lack their mate. He said the Lord has promised it. He said the spirit of the Lord will make it come true. The spirit of the Lord will gather them from all over. The spirit of the Lord will gather them from where it is. All you need to do is to sit down and search through the book and read. May you find your destiny in the book that God has given to you the scripture, the prophetic book, the Bible is that prophetic book that God has given to you so that as you search through the scripture, you will find your destiny, you will find your tomorrow, you will find your future, you will find what God has written concerning you. And I pray that the same way Jesus said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. You too will be able to say, this is the day that what God wrote about me was brought to fulfillment. Rise up on your feet wherever you are this morning. Rise up, rise up, rise up on your feet. You can be in your homes, you can be in the sanctuary, wherever you are. I want you to stand up on your feet. If you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, you can't afford to miss a day like this. This is your morning of joy. Weeping me endure for a night. Joy comet in the morning. This morning you will have joy. There shall be a performance of that which God has written concerning you. There shall be a performance of that which God has proposed concerning you. In the name of Jesus. All you need to do is to surrender your life to Jesus. And then the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, the one who has prevailed, will come and open your book. That's all you have to do. And if you are there this, this morning and you are saying, Jesus, I want the Lamb of God, I want the Lion of the tribe of Judah to prevail and open my book, then you, all you need to do, put your hand upon your heart and say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you this morning. I believe you are my Lord. I believe you are my Savior. I believe you died to prevail over the enemy so that my book of destiny can be opened. Open my book this morning. Open my book of destiny this morning. Break the seven seals. Let every seven testimonies, several promises of God, even concerning me, let them begin to manifest. Let them begin to be performed in 
the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. From today, I surrender my life to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' name we pray. If you pray that prayer with me, what you have simply done is to ask the Lion of the tribe of Judah, so go ahead and open your book. And I want to pray for you right now that you will reign on earth. I want to pray for you right now that you will sing a new song. I want to pray for you right now that you will weep no more. I want to pray for you right now that your prophecy will be performed. I want to pray for you right now that what God has written concerning you, it will be performed. I want to pray for you right now. You will no longer act according to what the devil has written. From now on, you will live according to what God has written in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray over all these your children hearing me this morning that their destiny that had been in KIV, their destiny that had been sealed in a book, their destiny that has never manifested, that this morning, because they have surrendered their life to you, you will break the seven seals and you will open their book. They will begin to operate in a new level of grace, a new level of glory. Power will be available to them. Strength will be available to them. Honor will be available to them. Glory will be available to them. Blessings will be available to them. In the name of Jesus. That day I am asking this morning. That the seven testimonies. The seven gifts. The seven promises. In Acts chapter 5. In verse 12 and verse 13. You will manifest in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Let those testimonies. Begin to manifest. Even from the book of Revelations. Chapter 5 verse 12. In the name of Jesus. I pray that the windows of heaven will open for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Your glory will come. Your blessing will come. The wisdom you need will come. The strength you need will come. The honor you need will come. The power you need will come. The riches you need will come. In the name of Jesus, there is a performance of that which God has written concerning you in the name of Jesus. Before that performance came to be, Jesus opened the book and said, this day is this thing fulfilled in your ears. All you need to do also is search through the book and read. And the day you see a scripture that jumps to your heart and you say, this is for me. Declare this day, this scripture is fulfilled in my life. I pray today that every written word in the book of God, every written word in the book of God that is for you, that is for me, you will find that word. In the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. I thank the pastor for this opportunity. And I want to declare that I will hear your testimony. Your joy will be full. And the grace of God will abound in your life. In Jesus name. Amen.